hi <laughs> how are you guys doing we're gonna be talking about a very interesting topic today how to know if they are meant for you before you date or marry them I get this often a lot during counseling and therapy people get to ask me blessing how do I know that they are the one Blessing, is he meant for me? Blessing, should I marry him? How do I know that he's the one? How do I know that she's the one? Is she meant for me? So I'm going to be teaching you how to know that they are meant for you before you date and you marry them. A lot of people have that confusion. So I'm going to clear that confusion today. Remember that my name is Okoro Blessing in Kiroka. And I'm popularly known as Blessing CEO. You're number one relationship therapist in Africa. The relationship therapist with a difference. The relationship therapist who gives you all those unanswered questions in your head. The most realistic, the youngest, the finest, the loudest, and the most factual relationship therapist in Africa. So we're going to be talking about this today. So I want you to pick your pen and paper and begin to jot things down. First of all, how do you know that people are meant for you? So sorry guys for the short break i had to take a call um sorry about that how do you know that people are meant for you how do you know that this person is meant for me i'm supposed to go into this relationship i'm supposed to go into this marriage this is one biggest confusion we have now first of all a lot of you have grown to understand that there is somebody that is meant for you if you're a christian oftentimes your pastor tell you there is a man meant for you wait for the man most times when you go for crusade or you go for Shiloh, they always tell you a man is meant for you. God will give you your man. You know, a lot of um, um, pastors often say that God will give you your man. God will give you your woman. Wait for your man. Wait for your woman. I think you hear that a lot. It's a very popular saying. Wait for your man. Wait for your woman. You know, you're waiting. So the question now is, how do you know that this person is meant for you when they come? How do you know that this person is your man and this person is your woman? Because when they're telling you wait for your man, wait for your woman they didn't tell you anything to look out for there is no particular identity so it's a bit confusing when somebody says wait for your man or wait for your wait for your woman do you understand so i'm going to break it down first of all first of all that thing that your religious leaders used to tell you your friends or your pastors or anybody used to tell you that somebody is meant for you is a myth it's not true Nobody, nobody is meant for you. That thing is what is called a myth. Myth is at the unrealistic things people have created in their head. They've coined it and made you believe it. If anybody ever tells you that there is somebody meant for you, tell the person that blessing CEO said is a lie. It's not true. Nobody is meant for you. You will choose who you want. Based on your upbringing, based on your religion, based on your environment, based on your morals. Choice. Nobody is meant for you. If there's a pastor telling you to wait for your man, that pastor is not being honest with you. The pastor don't know what he's saying. You are going to wait till eternity. That's why a lot of you that have waited for your man, you ended up marrying the wrong man. Pastor told you to wait for your woman. You ended up marrying the wrong woman. There are some of you that your pastors even choose wife for you in church. <laughs> some of you, your husband choose, your, your pastors choose husband for you in church. At the end of the day, those men are the worst kind of men that you ever got married to. Nobody is meant for you. People are only meant for you by choice. It is your choices. Yes, you would go and choose that thing that you are looking for. Now, it brings us back to the, to the topic. How do you know that people are meant for you? Your choice. As a human being, you have been built with morals. You have been built with ethics. You've been built with religion. We all came from different backgrounds. Some of you are Igbo. Some of you are Hausa. Some of you are Yoruba. Some of you are Fulani. Some of you are, stay outside the country. You know, different ethics. Now, as you begin to grow, 
what is going to bet what is meant for you are the things that you believe in. That's why oftentimes when you hear that somebody's from your place, you'll be excited. The Igbos do it, the Yorubans do it, the Hausa do it. When somebody tells you, oh, I'm from, your, from the same village, you'll be like, oh my God, where in my village? Where exactly are you from? You get excited. Do you understand? Aha! So, it is those morals, our ethics, our religion, our background, that will now bet who is meant for us. Compatibility is different from chemistry. Because you love somebody does not mean you can stay with them. So when they are telling you somebody is meant for you, somebody is meant for you, that's a lie. You will look for the person you can live with. God did not create anybody for you. Eh, you are meant to be my wife. You are meant to be my... All those things are myth. They are myth. Nonsense myth. Yes, she's meant to be my wife. You are meant... You are God sent. You are, you are meant to be my... All those things are myth. Nobody is meant for you. Some people come and tell you, this is your God's choosing husband. This is your God's choosing wife. If you marry this one, you will fail in the marriage. If you marry that one, you fail in the marriage. Your God's choosing... That's a myth. God did not choose anybody for you. That's a lie. <laughs> Even you that were born with your blood, your blood-related siblings, you guys go your separate ways. Do you know that? Even the one that God born, you, you and you and you and I'm come from the same mama womb. Hmm? Even that one, you put go your separate ways. Your brothers and your sisters, you go. Is now nobody is meant for you. That's a myth. You will choose. People are meant to you by choice. Now, the problem is, I want to teach you how to make these choices. Do you understand? Because the confusion is now, how do I make these choices? Do you understand? Blessing, how do I choose now? Now, that's why I'm breaking it down to tell you that, number one, your choices will start from your upbringing, your religion, your ethics, your morals. When you put these four things into consideration, if you want to choose a life partner, or somebody to be in a relationship, it will not be hard. Why do some of you not like me? I might not have the same morals like you have. Why do some of you not like me? I might not have the same ethics like you have. Why do some of you not like me? I might not have the same upbringing like you have. Some of you might like me and you cannot marry me because I don't have the same morals like you. If you take blessing to your mother, there will be a problem. If you take blessing to your father, there will be a problem. It's not because you don't like me. You like me, oh. You like me as blessing. I'm pretty. I'm intelligent. I'm, I have all it takes. But because you know that we don't share the same value system, you might not be able to marry me. So that is where the word compatibility comes in. That is why you can love people so much and you might not be able to live with them. That is why sometimes marriage is so hard. You love this girl. You love this man. But you can't stay with them. It's not a banji. It is compatibility. You don't date or marry with chemistry. You look for people you are compatible with. Because compatibility is what marriage is all about. Marriage simply means I want to stay with you. You are my company. Compatibility. So if I'm not compatible with you, I can't marry you. Marriage is more of compatibility. Relationship is more of love. Relationship is when I love, 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 and I'm tired, I go. Marriage is, I'm going to love you and I'm going to be compatible with you. I have to learn how to stay with you. I have to adjust to some certain things to be compatible with you. Right? And this compatibility is easier when you get people who have these things I talked about. Morals, your ethics, religion, upbringing. I have seen couples who divorce because this one is going to Catholic. This one is going to Pentecostal. This one say you're going to wed in my church. This one say no, you will not insult me. You wed in my church. This one say no, we have been going to the church for 100 years. This one say no, we have gone for 120 years. Religion. Yes. But imagine you marry somebody that is going to, that have the same, that share the same religion with you. There will be no fights. Someone that shared the same culture with you, there will be no fights. That was why in those days, marriage lasted longer when we married ourselves. You know, whenever we are talking about our parents' marriage, we, we forget that they are basic things. The reason why our marriages are not lasting these days is because our parents' marriage lasted because of culture. They shared the same culture. You will marry someone that is from your village. We share the same food. We share the same culture. We share the same chief. 
you know where I'm coming from, I know where you are coming from. When we have a misunderstanding, we go, our chief, because we share the same culture, our chief will gather us together and tell me, blessing, this is not how we do it in a boy state, too, and tell the man, ah, that is, that was what even kept our forefathers' marriage culture. What is keeping, killing our marriage now is because we don't have anything binding us together. We are just going to see each other and fall in love. And when we are tired, we fall out of love. Nothing binds us. John, there is no strong thing that is binding us. That's the honest truth. But then people could stay in marriage when you go. Your mother will tell you, don't worry, my daughter. Ah, it's our culture. Oh, this is what happened. Follow him like this. So oh, this is how they do. This is how they pamper men. Oh, that was why marriage lasted. So, but this day, everybody, will, I love you. I love, I love. It's, love is just a myth. Love is just noise. There must be something that makes the both of you compatible. That's why when you are making choices, when you are looking for people that are meant for you, you have to consider all these things. Another thing is morals. Morals simply means the things you believe in, your choice of living. There are some men that see women that wear short skirt as prostitutes. Yes, that's their moral. That's, what, that's, what, that's how they were brought up. Any girl that exposes her lap or exposes her leg is wayward. You can't change a lot of... That's their mindset. If you know you like wearing short skirts, don't bother marrying a man that, that has a moral of a woman wearing short skirts is we would. Because for every time you go out and you look sexy, he will call you a shower. For every time you wear something short, he will be insecure. For every time you wear something short, you went to cheat. For every time you look sexy, you are a prostitute. He will always have insecurity issues because that is not his moral. His moral is that when a girl is covered up, that is when she is decent. That is what used to cause problems in a lot of relationships and marriage. Morals. You're saying a different thing, and, but there are some men that will tell you, baby, look hot for me. Some men like their wife to dress sexy and hot. Some men like their wife to go and tempt other men. Yes, I have a boyfriend that will tell me, baby, go and tempt them. The, what I love is the fact that they will be looking at you. He calls it on non waka. They'll be looking at you, but they can't touch you. My man likes it. He likes it when I tempt people. He likes it when I pass and they look at me. He enjoys it. He, he likes the view. Sometimes when we go out, you tell me, baby, stand up. Go and urinate. You don't want to urinate. I tell him, I don't want to urinate now. I say, baby, just walk past. Just go and urinate now. Please. I say, baby, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling pressed. Just pass. Go to the toilet. Check your makeup. Dab your makeup. My man does it, yes. So when I get up, he say, hmm, hmm. When I come back, you're not telling me, hmm. See, baby, that guy was looking at you. Hey! Baby, you're fine, though. Morals. Morals. Do you understand? If and if you are that woman that have a certain kind of morals, and your husband tells you, "Baby, walk and um, get up. I want other men to admire," you might think that he doesn't love you. There are some women that say their husband does not love them just because their husband gave them freedom. Wear what you want to wear. Their husband does not disturb it. That's his moral. Why there are some that are jealous? They have to be tying you up and down for you to feel love. They are morals. These are the things that destroy relationship and marriage. We just want to marry for love. We don't consider the basic things that make us compatible. Relationship and marriage is not hard. I keep telling people who come for counseling. Relationship and marriage is not hard. We just keep making wrong choices and living with our myth. Uh, this one is meant for me. Nobody is meant for you. You are going to be intentional about your choice. If you want marriage to work, there is what is called intentionality. You will choose. You will pick. You will select. And that's the reason why marriage is common sense. Marriage is not just about love. You have to use your brains. Because you understand that I'm going to live with this person. It is more of compatibility than I love you, I love you, I love you. So who are you compatible with? Who shares the same ideology? Have you ever heard this word? He's meant for me. Do you know some people actually think that? Okay, let me use, sorry, I've used that before. Have you ever heard this word? My soulmates. Have you ever heard where somebody says, Oh my God, I found my soulmates. Do you know the meaning of what it is to be so tied with someone? Have you ever heard that word? So tied. We are so tied. It's not just the talk talk. I want to give you the real meaning of so tied and soulmates. Some of you just use the language. Let me teach you. Now, so tied and soulmates simply means we are connected. It is not spiritual. When you're hearing the word so tied and soulmates, it is not spiritual. Before I get into so tied and soulmates, do you ever wonder when two people take an oath? Do you know what used to happen when they take an oath? You cannot take an oath except you agree. Before you take an oath to want to see, you know all these love oaths, I love you, I love you, and people are going to come to an agreement. Right? Good. 
You people are going to arrange where you are going to meet. You people are going to know whether you are going to do the oath by blood. There's an agreement. You pin your hand. The person will pin their hand. You put your blood together. You make the promises and lick it. It shows you that love is not magic. We have to agree now. We have to come together and say yes. If I don't agree and you don't agree, there cannot be oath. There cannot be love. These are the things most of you forget when you are falling into love. Two people must come together. That two people coming together is what is called compatibility. You know, English have spoiled so many things. Most of us don't understand English. That two now that bring their blood is called compatibility. If I refuse to bring my blood, there is no oath. If you even if you cut my hand in the night and do like this, the oath will not work. If you can't force me to take oaths, oaths work in agreement. Our hearts are in agreement. So, that's the meaning. I want to break down soul tie for you. What does it mean when you call somebody your soulmate? Right? Soulmate simply means somebody that understands you. Somebody that have taken time to learn you. There are some men that will come into your life and they will pay attention to you for two months. There are some men that love you. They pay attention to you. They know when you're upset. Even when, they know, when you do your face like this, they know what it means. When you do your, your eye like this, they know what it means. When you do your head like this, they know what it means. Even when you are wearing that plastic smile, they know what it means. Now, because this person has studied you over time, even before you say something, he knows what you want to say. Those are people that you call your soulmate. It looks like magic sometimes. That this person knows me so well. The same thing, some men will tell you that my wife knows me so well. No, it's not magic. She took her time to study you. She paid attention to you. So she now knows your capability, your weak points. That's why some people, if you take your time to study your boyfriend, you will know, his, you will know what he can do. You, you'll be able to predict him. Some of you don't know your boyfriends, your girlfriend, because you don't pay attention. You enter a relationship, you have, you have five girls. So the one you are saying you love, you don't even know who she is. When you pay attention, two months, you can predict them. That's the meaning of soulmates. Somebody that connects with you mentally. I have this friend of mine. I used to tell him, and he used to tell me, if I wasn't married, I will marry you. He's married. Every day he tells me, and I tell him, if you were not married, I will marry you. You know why? You know when you have something in your head and you are trying to explain that thing in your head and you meet somebody and you just tell the person, this is it. You just, two, you just, you just say two lines and the person recites everything in your head. That's the meaning of soulmate. What used to cause problem in relationship and marriage? I'm trying to say something you are not understanding. You are refusing to understand. You are misunderstanding me. I will be talking. I will be arguing. You will be misunderstanding. I will be from misunderstanding. I will start raising my voice. Don't you? This is this is what I'm saying now. No, this is what quarrel, buzz, fights. That's what scatters marriage. Now. But your soulmates, before you drop one line, baby, I know what you're talking about. Okay, this stuff like that—that that business, right? You mean the shoe business, the one you want to do in China? Okay, I already have the China contacts. Okay, you mean the China, this one. I already know one or two people that you can get to meet. Jesus! There's no way you will not fall in love with that person. That's a soulmate. People that can connect with you mentally. Before you say yes, they know what you want to say. They will recite it for you. There are men like that. There are also women like that. They are rare. So when you find them, sometimes you think that they are God sent. They are not God sent. They are just intentional people. Because they love you, they pay attention. So you, most of you think he's spiritual. Oh, I cannot leave this guy. He's my soulmate. It's because he paid attention to you. But you, most of you don't pay attention. You enjoy it when somebody loves you, but you don't take time to also want to love somebody else. A lot of men will say, I cannot leave my wife because my wife knows me. You Do you know your wife? See how happy you are because a woman knows you. Find time to know her now. Your wife knows when you are angry. Your wife knows when to shut up. Your wife knows when to sit down. Your wife knows when to walk away. Your wife knows what to do. What about you? 
So the problem in relationship and marriage is that one person will know you. The other person, if you know your wife as much as she knows you, there will not be problem in marriage. But it's only one person that is always knowing each other. And you don't want the other person to know you. You enjoy the way your wife know you. Your wife know when to shut up. Your wife know when to be quiet. You do, what do you know about your wife? Nothing. Hello? Okay. Precious! Hold on, guys. I'm so sorry. Let me quickly send my kid sister an error. Why are you? Hold on, guys, please. The guy that is fixing the journey is here. Prayer? The man fixing the journey is here. Keep an eye. You finish it now. Yeah. Keep an eye on him so that when he's done, let me know. He wants to change that AV. Can you, can you, mm. When he finishes, just let me know. Sorry, guys. I had to drop a message. So, um, what was I will say? Mm. That is what it means for somebody to actually be your soulmate. And sometimes your pastors will not make it look as if it's spiritual. No, it's not spiritual. People who are soulmates are people who are intentional. When you are intentional, you can be soulmates to a lot of people. People who want to be around you because you pay attention. You are attentive. It is so easy for someone to be your soulmate when they are attentive. They pay attention to you. When you twitch your eye, they know what you're doing. So let's pay attention to more of direction than love. The truth is, most of you don't know the meaning of love. Even as I'm making this video right now, I could see some people in the comment section making noise. Some people don't know what love is. A lot of people don't know what love is. And that's the reason why you marry the person that you love. Yes, you cannot stay. A lot of you are with people you love. This relationship that is not working, don't you love the person? The one that you are married to, is it not love that took you there? Should be when you enter the marriage, you now knew that it was not all about love. Are you doing love in marriage? Let's be very honest. To all the married people in the house, I want you people to help me out. This marriage that you are, is it love you are doing inside marriage? Married people, please be honest with us on the comment section. Let's wait for the comments. Married people, those of you that have been married for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15 years. Biko, can you help me tell these young people? Is it love that you are doing in marriage? Please, tutor them for me. I want to read some comments here. Married people, please help me on the comment section. Is it love that you are doing in marriage? I want to hear from the married people before I continue. My married women and my married men, please help me out on this life. Is it love that you are doing in marriage? For those of them that say, my love, love. Is it love you have been doing there? Married people, help me. Is it love? Where are my married people? Okay, you are right. Good. Good. At least you can read the comments. Right on. It's not love that they are doing there. Marriage is responsibility. It's not love. Wake up from that slumber. Marriage is more of work. It's not love. There is more to marriage than love. Marriage is work. You're not going to marriage to go and relax. It's even a relationship that you'll be doing love. In marriage, you will work because marriage is the future. Marriage is what you put in. That's what you take out. So in marriage, you are going there to build your future and build your children's future. Marriage is that you are bringing someone into this world. It's not about I love you, I love you. It's about what's the next step? How are we going to eat? How are the children? School. Love is very small in marriage. So it is not love, my darling. It is more of responsibility. For those of you that are not informed, that are going to marriage to go and do Z word. No, 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 no. That's not what you're going there to go and do. So that when you get there, you not come and say, oh, I was not informed. I am informing you now, my darling. So those of you that are shouting love, <laughs> love, love, that, that's not what you're going there to do. It's work. So much work. Because it's what you put in that you take out in marriage. Marriage is like a bank. It is what you deposit that you go and withdraw. So oftentimes you deposit and be telling bank, help me use my money and be running interest. It is what you invest that you profit in marriage. Marriage is like an empty land. It is what you plant that you pluck. If you do not plant anything in that land, you will not pluck anything. Empty land. If you plant cassava, when rain fall, you will go come on cassava, cook for your children. If you plant yam, plant mango, anything where you plant for the land, now you go pluck. There is no magic in my, nobody, nobody. Don't go there and think that you want to go and be eating rice. Nothing is there. You will, you will build it. 
Anyhow you want your marriage to be, it is you that will go there and go and build it. Oh, I like Mercy Johnson. Build your own. Your, your, your marriage cannot be like Mercy Johnson. Because your husband is not Mercy Johnson's husband. Oh, I like Omotola. Your marriage can never be like Omotola. You do not marry pilots. Your husband no be Yoruba. You no be actress. Oh my God, I love Omoni Oboli. You cannot be like her. You will go and build the marriage that you want. That man that you married is the both of you that will come together. Because you cannot be liking Omoni Oboli's marriage and you don't marry the kind of Omoni Oboli's husband. You cannot be liking Mercy Johnson's marriage you don't like marrying the kind of Mercy Johnson's husband. Marriage is not Nigerian movie. It's not African magic. It's not Nollywood. You know, most of you have watched um, um, uh, um, Z World. Most of you have watched Telemundo to the point that you think that marriage is, oh, it will pursue you around the three. Oh, Tiana! Tiana, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You put now around the tree. I love you. The mouse, I love you. 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 You think that's like going to go and do marriage? <laughs> you go, you go, you go, and You go do you what, what, You go do you what, what, what? Marriage is sweet, oh. When you have the right mindset, what makes marriage difficult for a lot of you is because some of you have the wrong minds. I don't know what you think. You're going to marry your grand. The way I'm going to marry your grand, eat biscuits. Yeah, your mindset is what is making marriage so bad. You are thinking you are going there to eat biscuits and shawarma. Or you are going there to lick ice cream. I don't know what you think you is going there. The way all of you, if I see some girls on their wedding day dancing, hey, baby, please give it to me. Hey, hey. They are wedding day, they'll be jumping like rats. Hey, hey, I'll see them. Traditional marriage, they'll be dancing. Have you seen my beautiful baby? Oh, 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 oh. My sister. One month later. Hello. Hello. One month later. Alpha. Alpha. It's not a beginning. <laughs> Have you seen my beautiful baby? My sister. <laughs> marriage is work. Until you begin to have this understanding and this mindset, then you begin to build yourself. You begin to build your mind. Do you understand? And you begin to prepare. The problem is that a lot of you jump into marriage without preparation. So when you go there, marriage will just destabilize you. You know when you think that you're going to marriage, you go and eat biscuits. And you go there. You don't even see water drink. You'll be like, I was not informed. I'm informing you. Marriage is where you will go. If you want to be eating biscuits in marriage, you will buy it and go there. If you want to be licking ice cream in marriage, you will carry ice cream machine and go there. If you want to be chopping rice and stew, my sister, buy a bag of rice and enter market and buy tomato and be cooking it. Because that thing you want to chop, now you go cook up. Anyhow, where you want marriage to be, woto, woto, you want it to be like porridge, go there. Carry the porridge, carry the yam there, buy gas. When you reach marriage, you begin cooking. Don't think that you're going to go there and go and see porridge, my sister. <laughs> you go do you van, Anya. Uh -huh. Love is blind, but marriage will open your eyes. What did I say? Love is blind, but marriage will open your eyes. <laughs> you go begin to see. When you, are in when you are in a relationship, this, this is how you put used to love, like this. I love you, baby. Thank you. Your eyes are always small, small. Every time your eyes are like this for love. Mm. When you don't knock, finish. The guy don't knock you front and back. Your eye is always like this when you're in love. I love you, baby. I love you too. I'll be with you forever. You're the sugar in my tea. The butter in my bread. Your eye know they open when doing relationship because love, nana, love, they close up. Baby, yes. Will you marry me? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes, baby. Yes, baby. Yes, baby. Yes, baby. Pium. Oh my god. Instagram, Facebook. I'm engaged. That's how your eye they be. Wedding day, you go dance like this. Your eye. But when you enter marriage, after one month, see how your eye go be. Love is blind, but marriage will open your eye. It will not just open your eye, it will help you to be shining the eye. 
Some of them are even buy a glass. <laughs> Medicated. You know, for any you know, you know, forces in it. Let's see how it's very difficult. So my sister, relationship. You know, like this. Every time you go, like, person, we will sleep. I know that. This is love. This is love eye now. This is not the love eye. This is love eye now. They, they always they close. <laughs> they don't they see road. Uh, they love love people who are in love. Don't they are not seeing well. This is how they, their eyes used to be. They are now four thirty. Like every time it's looking as if they want to sleep. Mm, I love you. I love you too. I love you too, baby. Every time their eyes they close. That's how they don't they see. They don't they see. If they beat them. They know they see. Toxic, they know they see domestic violence, nothing. I love you. Don't I don't close, but once you just marry like this, even if you get eye problem, doctor, doctor will give you eyeglass. Your eye could be open small, small. And I cha, 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 This is marriage, this is relationship. <laughs> so my sister, <laughs> my brother, if you marry, they marry. Sape kwa I didn't even love his blind na marriage. Kwa kupo ganya. He love his blind. I'm in love. I'm in love. <laughs> my sister, my brother, give me kwa na marriage. You go hope you go shine your eye. You go shine your eye, woto woto. You go shine your eye with the woto woto. So with this few point of mine, I hope I've been able to teach you how to understand who is meant for you. I hope you can now be able to make those wise choices. Let me tell you something, my darling. Be you a man, be you a woman. Nobody breaks your heart. Your expectation is what always mess with you. Some of you just feel that somebody's coming to save you. You expect some of you just feel that somebody's coming to save you. You're expecting a man to. The man is expecting you to. All of you are just living with built up expectation. I'm expecting my wife to. I'm expecting my husband to be Mr. Expectant. Keep expecting until you people are ready. You people will now come to what it is and drop your expectation. Hold on, guys. I want to bring my charger. Make a put on for your body. You want to go to? Sorry, guys. So, I want to charge my phone. My battery is low. So by the time you guys are tired of expecting, you people will come to terms of what you have and begin to work with what you have and begin to build those expectations. Because some of you don't always work with the things you have. You're always working with the things that is in your head. This person is showing you that this is who I am. You're saying this is not who you are. I'm expecting you to. Yeah. So ask them what do we do? So what will it take? How much are we using to buy the cord and blah 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 spoil? Let me know how much I'm giving. Do you understand? I've forgotten what I'm talking about. So those of you who are expectant, every time you expect person, pay attention to who people show you that they are. Then work with it. If somebody tells you that this is who I am, accept the person for who they are and work with it. Stop living with those myths in your head. Expecting him to be, a, I'm expecting him to be a good man. He's showing you that he's a bad man. Wake up now. I'm expecting her to, to, to be a good woman. She's showing you that she's a bad woman. I'm expecting her to be a decent girl. She's showing you indecency. She's showing you. But, I, I, but I, I'm, I'm expecting, don't, 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 don't work with it. If you can live with the indecency, hey? if you cannot, don't, don't come and be. So most of you, is just your expectation. You have too many myths. Woman, they expect man to. Man, they expect woman to. And this expectation make a lot of you not to build yourself. Do you understand? You don't build yourself. Hold on, so I give me money. Twenty-three thousand. I say I hope when they change that thing 
is not going to have problem again. I don't go zip my head. So guys, um, with this few points of mine, I hope I've been able to teach you something and I hope you've learned something. How to know who is meant for you, how to choose your favorite life partner, and for you to also understand, for those of you who are just joining us, nobody is meant for you. Nobody, no, God did not create anybody for you. That's a lie. <laughs> nobody was created for you. You are going to be the one to make your choices. God gave us the power of choices, especially in the Bible when God um, chose Eve for Adam. And when Adam went to go and eat the fruits that God asked him not to eat, and he realized that he was naked, he went to go and hide. And when God called him, Adam, Adam, where are thou? He said, God, is that woman that you gave to me that gave me fruit to chop? You saw how Adam blamed God. That was when God now said, you will not go and choose the one you want to marry. God, you will stop making choice. God, God, any pastor that tell you that God chose the wife, tell the pastor that is a lie. God doesn't choose for anybody. The only person God chose for was for Adam. And after Adam experienced, he said, go and choose your own. So that tomorrow you will not come and say it's me that chose it for you. Good. So your choices are it. Some of you, you keep making bad choices. So nobody is choosing it. Stop allowing your pastor to choose wife for you. Allowing pastor to choose husband. All those things are just me. Your pastor don't know what you want. Your pastor don't know what you like. Your pastor don't know your upbringing. So why would they be choosing people for you? You are the one that will use your eye and go to the market and choose what you like. Because it's forever. Marriage is not biscuits. Neither is marriage sweet. Good. So when you have this mindset, you pay attention. Um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask, guys. Any questions, go ahead and ask. I'm going to take very few questions before I go. Time is chase tomorrow is coming to fix it. Okay, we'll be prepared for this. Give me water. So any other question guys? Am I good to go? Any other question guys? Somebody said, how will you know he's the right one? I think you're just coming into the live video. Maybe when I post the video, you can rewatch it all over again because I had talked about that earlier in the video. Maybe you came late, so I'm going to post the live video that you get to rewatch it again and the answer is there. When someone does something bad to other people, you see that they don't have conscience. They do have conscience, but people see life differently. People see life differently. People see life differently. Mm. Any other question, guys? Should you date a guy on separation? What does that mean? I don't understand what you mean by should you date a guy on separation? What does it mean? If you can elaborate your question. What do you mean by should you date a guy on separation? This one cannot be big. No, that's more bottle. Is it normal for a guy you have dated for seven years not to wish you happy birthday except you remind him? Why would you date a man for seven years? Dating him for seven years is not for him to have memory loss, Seth. Why would, why would you be dating a man for seven years? It's okay for him to have memory loss now. You've dated him for too long now, so his brain is supposed to knock. Can you be dating someone for seven years? 
somebody said my boyfriend says i should give him time and space it simply means he's done with you so give him time and block him what if you meet someone on facebook how would you know if he loves you Somebody said your phone number if one wants to book a session. Go to my biography. Every information you need about blessing is on my biography. Phone number, emails, and how to reach blessings here. Can someone that loves you ask to abort a child? It's possible. Maybe he's not ready. Because somebody asks you to abort a child doesn't mean that they don't love you. Maybe they're not ready to have children. So next time, use protection so that you don't have to keep messing around with your womb. Can you marry a man on Facebook without seeing him in reality? Are you marrying a ghost? Stop asking me foolish questions, please. Is it only on grounds of physical abuse that one may decide to leave a relationship? It's not only physical abuse. We have mental abuse. We have verbal abuse. Yes. People don't need to abuse you physically for you to leave. People can abuse you mentally. People can abuse you verbally. Because physical abuse, before they start to abuse you physically, they've been abusing you mentally. Uh, this thing you hear, depression, depression, depression. Depression starts from mental. Yes. Before physical. Yes. Mental is what's happening in your head. And that's the reason why you just hear that somebody woke up and died. Somebody woke up and jumped on mainland bridge. Ah, but this person, fine now. This girl yellow now. Nobody, they beat her now. She get can now. That's mental abuse. So when people abuse you mentally, your head will be full. You have a lot of things in your head. People even die of mental abuse and physical abuse. Because mental abuse, nobody can help you. Nobody knows what is going on here. That's why when people come and tell you I'm depressed, you'll be laughing. The only time you take it serious is when you see blood. Somebody can be abusing you mentally and tell you I'm dying, you'll be laughing. But ordinary blood, you'll be shouting, hey, whoa, hey, don't kill him, oh. You don't even know that mental abuse is more deadly than physical is just surface now. If somebody hits you, it's just on the surface. But mental, you are dying. So that's the reason why in this part of the world we take mental health very like a joke. Mm -hmm. You hear that somebody was okay doing where they were not sick and they just killed themselves. You be wondering, ah, but this guy come from rich family now. <laughs> Papa get money now because some of you actually think that depression is poverty. Uh -huh. But people often think that you can only be depressed when you don't have money. In this part of the world, people are mistaking depression for being broke or for being hungry. No, depression is mental. It starts from here. Somebody will be abusing you and making you feel less of yourself. If you are with a man that is always telling you you are an idiot, you are ugly, you are ugly, you are ugly. When you, because you love that person, you begin to believe what they say. That's why no matter how beautiful you are, and it doesn't come from your husband or from the guy you love, you know they sweet you. No matter how much strangers tell you you are beautiful, when your husband or your man tells you you are beautiful, it's, it's, it hits differently. Yes, imagine how special you feel. Everybody else will be telling you you are beautiful, you know, send them. But when your husband tells you you are beautiful, there's this special feeling you feel. Now, imagine when your husband now begins to tell you you are ugly. So there is nothing strangers are going to tell you outside. That will be enough. Hundred strangers can call you ugly outside. It's not touch you. But when you come into the house and that one that you love call you ugly, it can break you mentally. You will now begin to believe that you are ugly because you love that person. And that person is supposed to reflect you. That's the reason why I always advise, block negativity. I block negativity. If, so, if you're negative around me, I will block you. Because when people are close to you and they are giving you negative vibe, there is nothing like I'm um, a superwoman. It will be affecting you. That's the reason why sometimes the worst thing that can happen to you is to have a family member that is negative. Your brother does not like you. Your sister does not. Uh -huh. Those ones can be very painful. But if it's all these normal outside throws, I don't get pain when people are talking on Facebook because I don't know them, they are strangers. You know, anything you want to say, 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 say. You can call me Ashawo on Facebook, call me anything. But if somebody that is close to me call me Ashawo, I will react differently. One million people can call me Ashawo on Facebook, I'll just be laughing. But you see in real life, you call me Ashawo, or I know you one-on-one, -on -one, or you're close to me, I will react. So it hits differently. So that's the reason why you guard yourself. You guard yourself. And when this thing is happening to you, nobody's seen it though. And some of you are not even outspoken. So you might not even be able to talk to someone. Nobody knows what's going on in your head. So you begin to react. You begin to believe those abuse. You begin to say, oh, am I ugly? 
oh am i am i useless oh am i foolish you begin to feel that way then that's how depression starts from depression to suicide so you need to pay attention to that somebody said can you be married and still fall in love yes why not people there's something i used to tell people because you are married does not mean that your emotions have died marriage does not kill emotion for other people in fact it is even when you get married that you start to see people that you love you now start asking yourself where this guy day before they when i define wife where this guy day when i define husband have you not noticed that a lot of people the day once a guy just proposed to you you start seeing your spec once you just color ring you start saying where where they'll start asking you out maybe you've been single for two years one guy now met you i want to marry you once you just put a ring on your hand, everybody, you not be asking yourself, but, but I was single for two years. Where, where were all of you? Yes, you can actually be married and fall in love. Marriage does not kill emotion. Because I'm married to you does not mean I will not like somebody else. Uh -uh. Marriage just creates boundary and control. When you are married, it simply means control. When somebody marries, it simply means there is now boundary. Do you understand? And remember that you are the one that will set that boundary. I've told you before that marriage is intentionality. Nobody will come and set boundary for you in marriage. That's why a lot of married people cheat. Married men are cheating. Married men are cheating. Those are the ones that don't. So the marriage does not stop you from doing anything you want to do. It is you that will now set a boundary for yourself. I'm married, I beg. Make I stay here. My husband is good to me. Contentment. Marriage is not about satisfaction. Marriage is more about contentment because nobody can satisfy you. You can't marry the most beautiful girl. Your wife, no fine. They never even bump picking away fine. If you think that your wife is beautiful, come back in the next two years. You will see fine girls. If you think that your wife have big nash, come back in the next one year. You will see big nash. You will run. Those reasons that you married your wife, it will multiply. If you think that your husband have money, come again. Your husband will be broke. A lot of people who married men that have money, their husbands have retired. Now crypto boys, they come. Now Bitcoin boys, now ain't the trend. But during their time, it was oil money. That time it was oil money. Oil money. My husband works in oil company. Now, now Bitcoin. Now, now crypto. Crypto boys. Now, your own husband is now old school. So, you must learn contentment. It's not satisfaction. Nobody can satisfy you. As a human being, we always want more. The same way, when I had this iPhone, when I had this iPhone, I was like, oh my God, I was so happy. Hey, iPhone. This one is iPhone 12. When iPhone 13 came out. I was like, this one is old now. I don't like black phone again. I want gray. iPhone 13. iPhone 14. I don't they see I'm online. You know, the hungry meal. I don't they tell my bobo, baby, buy me iPhone 14. No. I want pink. Pink. That's human being. We are, I'm using two iPhones. I'm using three iPhone plus. This one I'm using to do Facebook Live. I'm not still content. If iPhone 14 is still come out, I go still buy them. Add them to this one. <laughs> so we are never con we are never satisfied as human beings. Do you understand? There is nothing this iPhone 13 can do that this iPhone iPhone 12 cannot do. You see this phone I'm using to do this Facebook Live? It's an iPhone X SR. It's one of the smallest my iPhone. But this is the most favorite phone. In fact, my cheapest iPhone is my most favorite iPhone. That's my best ca camera quality. I don't even use iPhone 13 to snap or do video. I use iPhone XR. My first, first iPhone. That's, that I can't do without the iPhone. So I at the end of the day, I don't even need this two iPhone. No. Because this one I'm using is serving the purpose. And this one is over 200 and something megabytes. I'll be waiting with space. Uh -huh. So it is contentment you get. Uh -huh. Marriage is not about that. Nobody's going to satisfy you. Your husband cannot satisfy you. Your wife cannot satisfy you. You will learn contentment. You will see fine boys. You will see fine girls. You will see baby Oko. You will see. <laughs> Do you understand? So you have to set those boundaries and be content. Hmm. Somebody said, what if you love each other but not compatible? I've talked about it before. So when I post this video, you go and watch the full video. I've talked about it. All right, guys. So I'm going to have to let you guys go now. I want to assume that I've answered all the questions. I want to assume that you learned something from here. Um... Somebody said, blessing, you're so intelligent. You are a woman who have made a lot of research and studied a lot. The other day you were talking 
on why Christians impose religion on others. I was driving, so I couldn't type one of the purpose of being a Christian, winning souls to Christ. Though I understood you very well, but I thought I should just point it out. Okay, thank you so very much. I was having an argument with my boyfriend, and I told him to stay away from me. I have been begging for days. Let's settle things, and he isn't replying. Doesn't mean you don't leave him now. He was looking for an opportunity to stay away, so let him stay away for, for life. Um, okay, guys, I think I have to go right now. I'm tired. Um, maybe we could take your question and answer some other time, but I'm tired right now. My back is paining me. The chair I'm sitting on is quite high, so I need to get off the chair. My back hurts. So, guys, I love you guys. Have a wonderful day, and I hope you learned something. Mwah. Mwah.